Chapter 13 is about binomial distribution. In order to be a binomial distribution, there are four, four rules that need to apply. The first one is that there are a fixed number of observations. So, observations is normally abbreviated by the letter N. Okay, the second rule here is that all of the observations are independent of each other. Meaning, meaning that one observation does not depend on another observation. The third rule is that the observations can be categorized into two different groups. One would be success, and, well, the other one would be failure. for binomial distributions is that the probability of each observation occurring is the same no matter what. So the probability of each observation is the same. So those are the four things to keep in mind before you can apply any of the binomial distributions. So, observations are abbreviated with the letter N, and the probability of success is abbreviated with P. Now, the first thing, the first formula that we are given is something that looks like this. Okay, and what this means here is that n is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. The first thing that is important to know is what factorial actually means. And this exclamation point is factorial. So, if it, me it means that you need to multiply it by every whole number below that number. So, if we had 5 factorial, this would be the same as 5 times 4 times 3, times 2, times 1, and you stop at 1. So, um, 7 factorial would then be 7 times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Another important one to know is that 0 factorial is just equal to 1, not 0. Now that we know what factorial means, we can continue on with this, with this here. In this, in this equation here, k is represents the number of successes. So if I was flipping a coin and I flipped a coin three times in a row and I 
I called Head's success. Okay? And if we were trying... <clears throat> if I wrote out every single possibility of different arrangements in which I'm flipping a coin three times. Um, and he H stands for heads. T for tails. Okay, if I were to write down all the different combinations and orders here, we could start out with three heads being flipped, or heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, or tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, Heads, tails, tails, or tails all three times. Those are all the possibilities here of flipping a coin and the different arrangements that we have. So this equation right here that we wrote is called the binomial... coefficient. And what it means is this will tell us the total number of arrangements that will occur. So <clears throat> if I said that I'm, here's our, our thing, we're flipping it three times. So we have three observations. And I want to see, um, calling a success heads, and I want two successes. So out of the three times, I want to get heads twice. So if we use this a formula here, n is observation, so there's three observations, and two times of getting a success. So here, 3 factorial over 2, because 2 is k successes, and 3 minus 2 factorial. So, if we write this out, this is the same as 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1 and 3 minus 2 is 1 so 1 factorial which is just 1 and if we look here the 2's can cancel out and the 1's don't matter so we know that this is equal to 3 so this is telling us that there's three different arrangements that I can have two heads when I flip a coin three times. And if we look back at a thing, all of the arrangements that I drew here, here is the three that I have only two heads. And there is indeed three of them. probability, we don't just need to know the uh, specific arrangements, but we're looking to find the probability of something occurring. So,